Chat, what's up, man? YouTube, what's up? How y'all making out, man? This is the Needed Podcast, episode 49. One away from 50, three away from the year anniversary. Um, appreciate all you guys coming through. If you're in the chat, put some hennies in the chat, man. We are going to talk about the patch. The patch is the biggest news that came out. I will give you guys my opinion on it. I played 56 games a weekend league. Um, and shoot, that's pretty much... Oh, let me make sure I put these joints on. Oh, let me get rid of these. Yeah, so there's two different patches. There's two different adjustments that were made to the game. Uh, one was the salary cap. One was the gameplay. So we can talk about that. So I appreciate you guys coming through, man. If you're in the chat, thank you for watching live. If you're not watching live, you can watch it live. Twitch.tv slash dub dot. Every Tuesday night we do this. We've done it for 49 straight weeks. Um... And uh, I'll tell you guys, if you're watching this on YouTube or if you're listening on SoundCloud, I'll probably get 10 SoundCloud views a or listens a week. So if you are one of the people that listen to this on SoundCloud, I appreciate you guys. I want to keep putting that up there every every week to make sure you guys can listen to it without using your battery on YouTube, without wasting, you know, whatever it is to watch on YouTube. Because a lot of this stuff, especially this episode, I'm not going to have anything to look over, any gameplay or anything like that to look over. Just talking about the patch. Now, uh, like I said, I played 56 games a week in league. If any of you guys watched that, I mean, that did. You know, it was fun. You know, I had a good time. Uh, my man Misery with the 21 months. I appreciate it. Um, let's see who guest appearance. That's what they're asking for in the chat. Uh, see who, uh, since last time I played with Madden, he pretty much, according to him, he doesn't really play Madden anymore. But. We'll talk about we'll talk about a lot of things like that. So there was a patch. There was a nice little stream. They had Clint on the stream, and he was talking about how good the patch was. Blah blah blah. And for me, it was cool. It was nice to hear about it. Um, I, I will tell you this: one of the biggest problems that we get is that sometimes there's a lot of things that happen in the patch that aren't talked about at all on in the patch notes or aren't talked about at all in the stream aren't talked about at all until they happen you know and I think I don't know if they have any control over this I don't know what they purposely do I honestly as a lot of us talk about video games we talk about uh you know what they need to do what they have done and honestly I don't really know how video games work I'm just sipping some some Dr. Pepper, you know, that's all. Some diet Dr. Pepper. I'm trying to slim up. I'm trying to get rid of all this first month of Madden weight that I put on and get back to regular fat, you know. So we just on here sipping the diet Dr. Pepper. Plus, I'll tell you, man, the older I get, the more I'm like, yo, I don't like all that damn sugar. I don't like sugar in anything. Like, keep sugar away from me, for real. And the older I get, man, I really am an old person now, chat. Now, but I will tell you guys, okay, so we'll first start with the salary cap update because this was a huge topic, a huge topic, a pretty much, uh, where was, what, what, what are we doing here, W? There we go. All right. This was a huge topic in uh, the last, how many weeks have we talked about the chat? You know, like we have, we have how, how many la how many weeks in a row have we talked about the salary cap? What the cap's going to be? Where is it going to raise? How are we going to get it done? Like, what? How many weeks? I want to say maybe four weeks straight. You know, so for me, uh, this was definitely something in the process um, of happening, and and the main thing that did did was. They upped the cap by fifty points, which I felt like was cool. It wasn't a lot. Pretty much enough to fit another ability on your team, boost some other players that you already have. I feel like 825, we're at a good place right now. And and, and Skimbo is in chat. We will talk about that as well at, with the gameplay update. You know, um, but I want to talk about the cap first uh, because I think 825 is pretty good. I I will tell you guys this and and. and Jokers was the main component for raising the cap. And I feel like the more I think about it, the more I feel like, you know what? On Mutt, when I have all my players, 
I do a pretty good job against the run. You know, when I have Patrick Willis and I have Shazier and Von Miller and Lawrence Taylor and, and Aaron Donald and any player I want, I do pretty good against the run. You know, I'm not, as much as you guys complain about Mutt, for me people, for me people, uh, I'm not, I feel strong when I have every player on my team that I want. I really do feel strong uh, about that. So the when I think about that, to me, the higher the cap, the better the game. I don't know, or maybe, maybe for me it's the better, you know, the better I can play defense because I put all those goons out there. I put all those high elites. I put all those guys that can fight, shed, and everything. Uh, here, this is how it go. And then uh, what they did was they did lower some gold cards. And chat, you guys can help me because I don't know any gold cards that got lowered that much to where it's like, oh, they're on my team now. You know, uh, Apke and Morris are the same cap. Um, so for me, I, I don't really know the glitchy golds that got lowered. Um, I don't know. So we'll find out. But like I said, I feel like 825 is a decent place to go. But if you're just going to raise it 50 points, you know, I, I feel like. Oh, my gosh. If you're just going to raise it 50 points, when are you going to raise it again? In another two months? You know, I feel like a little raise. That's like I feel like that's a little raise. In the past, we've gone up from what, like 750 to like 950 or 900 to 1100. Or I feel like we've gone up more than 50 points. So I'm concerned that we might be stuck at 825 for a long time. And if we're stuck at 825 for a long time, how can we adapt to that? Do, are we going to have another update where we go up 200 points? Or is the next update going to be 50 points as well? Uh, okay, yeah. Jaybird, that sounds... Uh, listen, I believe it when I see it. Um... So for me, I, I feel like we had a good place with salary cap. I, I'll tell you what, I do not read patch notes. I do not read patch notes. Listen, I listen, I don't read it, listen, that's some skimbo esque let me read and diagnose all the patch notes. Cause like I just said in the intro, ninety percent of the shit that goes wrong or changes in the patch, that shit ain't in the patch notes. I tell you that, chat. It's not in the patch notes. The patch notes are it's a smoke and mirrors. I got to feel the game. I got to touch the game. I got to involve my mind in the game. That's my patch notes. That's my patch notes. So if you're one of these guys that sit there and read the patch notes and take notes and write how I can fix your scheme, no, man, you got to feel the game. You got to breathe the game. You got to live the game. You got to experience the shit that happens in the game after the patch that's how you know what the patch notes are. Not because what they tell you. Is that how you just want to live your life? Are you the people that just do what they tell you and understand just, oh, what they tell you is it? Is that, is that the type of people you guys are? You patch notes as people? Patch notes. Patch notes. Listen, I'm just telling y'all my opinion on patch notes right now. All right? You know, some people live by what they tell you and some people live by what they see. You know, that's how I feel about it. You know what I'm saying? But that's you guys. You know, if you guys like reading the patch notes, God bless your heart. I feel like Jay Bird's a big patch note guy. He Jay Bird takes his scheme, looks at the patch notes. He does a Venn diagram. Once he does his Venn diagram, then he might go to practice mode with his Venn diagram, break down which way if the run left got better or the run right got better. You know, he's that type of player. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, like I, I have no I have no desire in my life to read patch notes. You know, like that if my life gets to the point where I'm really reading patch notes, I mean geez, come on now boys. Come on now boys. Like if you if your life if you have that much free time, man, you gotta be doing something else. And how does a guy like Jimbert he got enough time to read the patch notes, but not enough time to learn how to run fucking quick slants in practice mode. He can't learn how to run that. You know what I'm saying? I'm done. I'm not. Cap, I'm not capping on Jay Bird no more, man. He, I, I be capping on Jay Bird too much. That's it. No more Jay Bird jokes today. Unless we do a Tinder stream, we might see a Jay Bird face pop up. You know what I'm saying? But all right, that's how SC is. I feel. I feel like it's in a decent place. I do. I don't know if you guys agree. Just as far as the cap, I feel like it's a decent little area, man. Do you guys? 
And I actually like I said, do you think 825 is cool? Do you think it should be lower? Do you think it should be higher? We don't need a Jaybird emo uh, Jaybird. Let's 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 reel it back, Jaybird. Let's reel it back. Like it's here, let's bring it back to here, okay? No, I don't ever want to play this. I played Jay Bird one time on Players Lounge, I, and he just was just ran. I, I, I'm good, man. I'll cross that bridge if I get to it. Yeah, he got way too much dip on his chip right now. He want he want to emote. Golly. Yeah, I feel like I feel like the um I feel like the cap's in a decent spot. I feel like it is. So we'll see how it goes. I I did draw a picture today for about two hours. I'm gonna play. A lot of salary cap this week, next week, pretty much here on out. I'd set away for the cap. Cap didn't change as much as I thought it would, but I am going to grind it. I feel like I got a good team right now. want to put it on the field because the best way to learn what happens in a game is not reading the patch notes. It's putting your team on the field and see what they can do. You know, that's pretty much what I know. So I'm excited to play that. Uh, so, all right, well, let's talk about the actual gameplay. Let's talk about the actual gameplay because... This is um, the biggest thing. This is the biggest. My man Cliffendor. <laughs> Cliffendor with the sub. Thank you. Um, All right. The main. I'll be honest. The gameplay update. There's a lot of things. And I when, when I, after a couple weeks of the gameplay update. I sit there and I think to myself man. What the what and, and this is I try to get into the, the head of the entire electronic arts. I try to just become the owners of electronic arts. I need to think what they think. It's not about what Clint thinks. It's not about what RG thinks. It's not about what any of those guys think. They're not important. In the grand scheme of EA, they are important. So I think to myself, I say, what do they think in their meetings? When they're all there in their suits and ties and they're talking about Madden, what do they think? You know, here we go. Now, it is MCS season. I don't know, and, and when we talk about the MCS, how much is the MCS, how much does that really matter to them? You know, I think, I try to think about that. I also try to think about, I mean, it's a business. So, one, the same company makes FIFA. You know, let, let's think about that too. So, the same company makes FIFA, which is kind of, and I'll ask this to the chat, is FIFA over Madden? And I, I, I'm starting to feel like, Yes. Now, Madden has, uh, obviously, the legacy of 20-plus years, of 30 years, pretty much. But it, but you get to the point where if you're in, in EA, FIFA is probably, I want to say, is their biggest game. You know what I'm saying? And that pretty much just came out, right? So you're in this meeting, and, and you're sitting around. You're looking at everybody you're working with, right? Let's picture this, chat. I'm the head of EA, whoever the hell it is. I'm looking at all the people I work with. We got our biggest game coming out, bang. We got Madden, it was a cool game, you know what I'm saying? What am I more worried about? Like, what is my main concern right now? Okay, that's what you gotta ask. FIFA, right? Cause I'm gonna get my money off of this FIFA. Let me, I'm I'm concerned about FIFA. I'm Johnny EA, I put, I, you know, I have all my stocks in EA, or I'm the owner, I'm the CEO, I'm concerned about FIFA, right? Now, obviously, the Madden team is the Madden team, but if you go to the top and you and you find those people and they they pretty much just concerned about what's going to grow their business, they're going to be looking at, at FIFA. And shout out my man Poon Job with the sub, man, I appreciate. It. You know, Apex. I understand that, but at the end of the day, there has to be a crossover somewhere, right? And I understand that there's different buildings, there's different, you know, this this is the Madden group, this is the NHL group, this is the FIFA group, but at some point, the tributaries of the river meet the river, right? That's my point. At some point, I, maybe I'm wrong, maybe those are completely fucking different places, maybe Madden has n completely nothing, they, they don't have any interaction with EA or uh, with FIFA, and, and the, the guy, the head of EA has no control over what he cares about more. Maybe I'm wrong. However, I feel like all the tributaries of the river wind up going into the river. And the river is whoever the hell makes the choices. 
So, my biggest point was this. Okay, FIFA's coming out is my biggest game. And you're not stupid. The juggernaut and probably... I, I will venture to say, and you guys can correct me on this. Do you think 2K... Where is 2K compared to FIFA? Because I'm going to just lean that 2K is a bigger game than Madden. I'm just going to agree. I, I just feel that way. I feel like more people play it. One, I'm not going to get into this talk, but it's because it's easier to play. Simple and plain. Period. See, soccer is definitely an international sport, but you guys underrate how international the NBA is. The NBA is super international. You know? So I, I think as much as we we're gassing FIFA, right? Yeah, I, as much as we're gassing FIFA, we have to realize that 2K is international. And that's the that's the biggest one of the biggest things that's you know, makes the NBA that much more successful gaming wise than you know, what's gonna call it than the NFL, honestly. But okay, let's say FIFA's the biggest forever it is. I, I don't know shit about FIFA. I don't know how to play FIFA. I don't know anything about soccer. It, it intimidates me. I don't know how many players on the field. I don't know what positions they are. I don't know. I know about four players. Um, I don't know what plays they run. I don't know where to kick the ball. I don't know the rules. I never understood. Like, they say it's 90 minutes, but then they have, like, this stoppage time shit. So instead of playing in 90 minutes, now we're playing to 106 minutes because we had some stoppage in the first quarter. Then now all of a sudden we got to add time to the game. Like, what type of horse shit is that? Like, what? There's no buzzer beaters in soccer. It's like nobody fucking knows what the time is. Yeah, like, like uh, it's just crazy to me. So, to me, I don't want to play soccer. I don't know. For like, Growing up, we just never really, I never really got into soccer. It was never my thing. But uh, it's, just, it's just wild. But anyway. So, all right. This all goes back to we're sitting at the EA table, right? We're sitting at the EA table. How do we get people still playing Madden? Because for me, me, myself, what makes me, me, and what makes you guys, that some of you guys in the chat, shout out to AD with the sub, makes some of you guys in the chat, what makes you guys great at video games or, or is that need to want to get better. There's two type of people in this world. There's people that get punched in the face and run away, and there's people that get punched in the face and want to punch back. They might not be able to punch back right away, but they want to learn how to punch back because they didn't like the feeling of getting punched in the face. But now there's people that get punched in the face and say, fuck that, I'm running away, I don't want anything to do with that punch in the face. And that goes down to pretty much everything. And I will tell you there's probably 90% more people that get punched in the face and run away than people that get punched in the face and want to learn how to punch back. And I think Madden Madden relates to that completely because what happens is, man, we at some point every single person in here, listen, then got their face punched in the Madden. Every single person, whether it's Problem, Mo, Joe, Skimbo, they remember that first time, damn, I got my ass whooped. You know, I didn't know what the hell I was doing. You know, I remember I remember that night, I remember that so vividly, the times I got my ass whooped, right? And so for me, everybody that plays video games eventually comes to that point. You know, and you get to that point, and then what you do after that point, yeah, Chuck Hollywood, 2009. You know what I'm saying? Just in full back diving me to death. Yeah, Skimbo got punched on at some point. Right? Okay, so, and then you figure out, well, what am I going to do? You know, I remember me, I was like, man, I got nano bliss. How do I do that? I want to learn how to do that. And this was before Twitch or YouTube. You know, and I just looked at the play and I said, you know, I can learn how to do that. And just figured it out. Because to me, it was a puzzle. And now I want to learn. Oh, now I know how to nano. Now I know how to shoot a, a, a cornerback through the B gap and tackle you every time. Hell yeah, let's fucking go. I'm going to go bring this to the next guy, and I'm going to whoop his ass. Then I'm going to bring what I learned online to my little neighborhood friends, and I'm going to whoop their ass, and I'm going to smile, and then I'm going to be the one that's punching. That's what makes competitors competitors. Now, there's also the people, like Misery, they get popped, and they disappear, you know, and they don't want to play anymore. You know, and I think the majority of people that play Madden are like that. Once they get blown out, once they throw a pick six, bang, close app, now I'm playing World of Warcraft. Now I'm playing, you know, Apex, or now I'm playing, you know, 2K, or now I'm playing, you know, whatever else video game they have. So essentially, to me, the lifespan of a Madden, a, a casual Madden player isn't that long. I'm saying, I feel like they might play a week, they might play two weeks or something. Now, obviously, us mutt junkies, most of the 200 people in here, we're mutt junkies, we're going to be playing all year round. But they want to try to keep that, they want to improve this group of people that play the game year round. 
and how do they do that? That's my question. Now, if I told you, let's make everybody, let's make it so people don't get blown out. Because I'm be honest, when you get punched in the face, when you get blown out, yeah, I want to go play UFC like Siwoo. That's what he does. He gets blown out. I'm done over this game. Everybody's good already. Bye. And he goes plays UFC, right? So to me, if I'm and we're back at the EA meeting now, chat, we're back at the now. Come with me to the EA meeting, and we're sitting around. We got Brian, we got Tommy, we got you know, whoever the hell else lined up at the meeting in our suits, and we think like this, like. How do we keep everybody playing the game? And I'll ask you guys this, chat. YouTube, I'll say, how do you keep everybody playing the game? And this is honestly, I don't know if it's this blatant, but I think this honestly goes on. Now, if I had a video game, I would have the same discussion. How the hell do I keep people playing the game? How do I have people playing? I want people playing my game all day. That's what I want, right? So for me, the way you keep people playing the game the whole time is one, let's try to make the games a little bit shorter so people aren't getting beat 45 to three. Let's go ahead and put the play clock at 40 seconds so people really aren't getting beat. You know, and let's go here and let's go make the run a little bit better. So not only can they run effectively, but on top of that, the clock's gonna run. So not only are they running, being effective on offense, but what they're going to do is they are going to shorten the game because they're running and the clock is running. So, okay, now you put Bazooka Larry against a good player. Bazooka Larry is going to fight. One, because he's running the ball. Two, because the clock's running. Three, because the clock is short. So, Bazooka Larry, he's having fucking fun. Now, and I'll ask you guys this, quiet chat. If you lose 21 to 14, you're way more likely to go ahead and search and try to play another game because you only a touchdown away. You you not you not you ain't get beat that bad. But if the game is five minutes, if the game is thirty second play clock, and you're playing somebody that's tough and you can't run the ball, you're getting out of there in the second quarter and you're getting on UFC. So for me, I really feel like I really feel like it goes down to how can we get these people playing the game more? How can we keep these guys engaged and wanting to play Madden? Which ultimately for me, a Madden person, a Madden content creator. This is cool. You know, I want I want a thousand times as many people play Madden playing Madden. I would love this. You know, but for me, uh, for me as a passer and a Madden player, not the best thing in the world. You know, so honestly, I'm glad I'm at the position I am. And I don't have to fight through the jungle. I mean, I love the jungle. And I'm going to be in the jungle all until qualifying is over. However, for me... If I was one of these young up-and-coming kids, man, I got to fight through the jungle and I'm a passer, Lord Jesus. You know, and, 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 and that's, that's and, and I don't know if it's that blatant, but for me, for me, what I was going to say is, for me, I don't, I think there's some truth to, this is just my thoughts, what I think ultimately happens in that big-ass meeting at EA. I think that's what happens. It's just speculation. It's just how I feel. It's just the vibe of the game. A lot of it goes back to when I did talk to Rex uh, on my podcast probably about half a year ago. If you haven't watched that, it is my highest viewed SoundCloud song or my song, highest viewed SoundCloud track. It is on the YouTube, man. My interview with Rex where he really broke down how they wanted to retain players. They want to keep players. And, and a lot of the goal EA was keeping these players playing. And uh, one thing, and I think drop picks is part of that. You know, and I do, and as much as I think about this, keep players playing. It, I don't know if DDA is real. Rex has denied it, and for me, ultimately, I trust Rex wholeheartedly when he talks to me, both in person and, or both in private and on platforms. But I feel like DDA. I mean, it makes all the sense in the world. You know, if I had a game, I would put some damn DDA in it, one thousand percent. Would you guys? If you guys had a product that could keep people around. And they wouldn't get blown out. They wouldn't. Would you put that product, or would you put that DDA into your product? Cause I would put the shit into mine. You know what I'm saying? If if I could make my stream to the point where, if you weren't having fun, all of a sudden it started just generating fun for you, and you would want to stay here, I would do the shit. Yes, I would want people to stay here the whole time, honestly. And chat and YouTube, those guys would say DDA. What DDA essentially is is. If you're getting blown out in the Madden, if you're losing in Madden, the game starts cheating for you. The game starts getting easier on you. You'll, you'll catch more picks. You'll get a fumble. 
you'll catch something in traffic. You'll just just the game will start at just keeping you alive, pretty much. Yeah, and, and and as much as we talk about the run game being good, the passing or, or the running is easy. To me, it's not really about the running being. Easy. I mean, ultimately, it is. But till I ask you. I'll ask you guys this, chat. Has there been a year in which running is or the 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 difficulty in passing and running is this far apart? I feel like passing is legitimately tough in this game. To learn how to pass, protect, to navigate the pocket, to control these DNs, to to make reads, to you know, I, I feel like it's legitimately tough to do for a casual person. Also, on top of that. To make passing that not that it's light years difficult because I think zones suck. I think uh, I, I don't think zones suck. I just don't think they're good. If that makes sense, you know what I mean. So for me, it's like passing is pretty difficult. And then on the other end of the spectrum, we got running easy as shit. So to have these two things, I think that's the biggest disconnect. Is that damn? It's hard as hell to block Von Miller, Lawrence Taylor, and Aaron Donald and complete a pass. It's easy as hell to press A and run stretch. You know. You know, so for me, I think the that's the biggest disconnect. I don't know. I don't know what y'all running that, that zones. I don't know what y'all running that zones are really good. I don't know. Yeah, the pass rush is just... I really do think this... I really feel like... I, I like the pass rush. The pass rush, I think the pass rush is good. It takes a lot of pocket. It takes a lot of pre-snap shit to, to, to stop the pass rush. I got a double team. I got a blocker running back. I got a slide. I got to step up in the pocket. Like, man, I feel like that's, I feel like, hear, hear me out on this chat. Because I know how to do that, because I'm good, I will never lose to the three-man rush. Or it's not that I won't lose. It, I will be a lot more successful against it than Bazooka Larry. And I like that part of the game. Whereas if I take the time, I know how to do something, I know how to block, I know how to stand in the pocket, I am better at passing than Bazooka Larry. So Bazooka Timmy is beating the shit out of Bazooka Larry's with his three-man rush with his three superstars on the D-line. He's beating the shit out of them. Then he comes across me, okay, I'm not Boo Boo the Fool. I know how to set up my offensive line. I know how to stand in the pocket. So I'm going to pop Bazooka Timmy, and then he's going to be like, what the hell? Bazooka Larry, he couldn't stop this shit, but Dub Dot Dub, he's killing me. You know, I feel like that's I feel like that's cool. I feel like I feel like the double team the double team saved it. I, for me, the double team shit is such an underrated patch. It's such an underrated uh, adjustment for the game because I feel like it saved the passing game. I w without that double team feature, this game would be fucking awful. I'll tell you that. Yeah, exactly, Mystery. That's what happens. Bazooka Timmy, he cannot three man rush me, so he goes play UFC. You know. Yeah, so I mean, ultimately I do think it comes down to they want people playing the game and playing the game as long as possible. And the more people play the game, the more they're like, hmm, let me go try mutt. Okay, you got to take out something. They can't just have a thousand. There's not a million buttons on it. I don't know what the hell they can do. I, I don't know what the hell people did but pinch. That might have been good. Only thing I want now, chat, this is what I want now. I want a... Forget ID to Mike. Take that shit, throw it out, right? I want a, this is who my running back is going to block feature. Give me the double team. Give me, okay, running back, this is who you block feature. ID to Mike, right? If we have ID to Mike, get rid of that, make it block the run. running back, this is who you block feature. And that's the running back's person. If that person doesn't blitz, the running back might as well fall on the ground. But if I'm sitting here and I'm looking and I say, man, I got, I'm got, going to slide left. Now I want my running back to pick up this guy. I don't want to be in more control over what my running back does in pass protection. That That's my next step. Um, yeah, pursuit angles are, are, are atrocious for sure. But, uh, you know. But like I said, it ultimately all comes back to how can we keep people playing the game. That's what I think. I may be wrong. I may be right. I don't know. It's just what I think. I have no knowledge. Uh, I don't know why 
Enforcer. How do we feel about Enforcer, Chad? Now, I feel like it was definitely overpowered. But with the way the running backs were throwing my D-line gun, I felt like it was fire with fire. You know, if you're going to be choke slamming my, my linebackers and choke slamming my D-linemen, I got to have somebody in there to come clean that up. And I don't want to have to do it. Now, I will tell you, it's probably the least user-based thing in the history of the world. Now, the symbol will get to that point about competitive mode. For me, I'll, I'll tell you about competitive mode. My, my feeling on competitive mode, my feeling, feeling on all that mode, I will tell you my feeling. But first of all, like I said, I want to talk about Enforcer. Now, remind me to talk about competitive mode and, sim and all that shit and why there's no difference. For me, Enforcer, yeah, the running moves were tough. Enforcer was tough. Now, I saw Friday Night Football. I saw two... People that I think are pretty goddamn average at the game. Love you guys, man. Oreo already knows that's my guy. Love him. But he's pretty fucking average at the game. I really do. I really think he's average. I think underrated king, average. And I will tell you, as my, as way my mind works, as far as man, average is a goddamn compliment. I'll tell you that right now. So, I watched these guys win. And one of them bagged a run because he had enforcers, right? You know what I'm saying? And Oreo won the thing because he put them forces out, and that shit deaded all that all that Lamar Jackson stuff, right? And Oreo, and, and as much as we want to, and I must not kill Oreo, you know, I just kill him. But he was smart enough to say, I'm putting ten caps everywhere else, and I'm putting two enforcers out there, and that shit dominated, you know. And that's why that's why he wound up boxing that quarterback run stuff with the people. You know what I'm saying. So, for real, for me, um. That was a counter to the run. Now, not only did they completely nerf uh, Enforcer, which for me, I feel like Enforcer, they shouldn't get, put it like this way, they shouldn't be getting hit sticks. He should tackle that person every time. But if you want a hit stick, you should have to click on and do it. That's just how I've always felt about hit sticks. You guys know that, how I feel about computer hit sticking. Enforcer was just the steroid version of the computer hit stick. That's all it was. So for me, I... I it was a balance for the run, and now without that, with there being a bug in Enforcer, and Enforcer does not work the same, uh, Patrick Willis, and especially Pat Tillman, are really getting stiff-armed and going around, so it's definitely tough, man, uh, because that was the main counter to running the ball. So I right now, my first side kept team I'm going to try, I don't think I'm going to have Pat Tillman, or I want to have Patrick Willis, but with no abilities. Now... Let's talk about. First of all, I think Mo. I, I think Mo's good. I just think he runs. He runs offensively. He's not good. Defensively, he's elite. And it's not even to say that he's not good on offense. It's just not. And it's nothing pretty. That's all. You know, sometimes you guys get enamored, and myself included, we get enamored with what's pretty, what looks good. You know, but sometimes you just gotta. And I talk about self scouting all the time. You know, if it was up to Mo, he would never pass. You know, he don't want to pass. Honestly, to me, I wish I could never have to pass. So, for me, you got to self scout and say, you know what, I'm Mo. I don't want to pass. I'm going to run and I'm going to play defense. You know, and that's what separates, you know, the best runners. If you're that good of a runner, man, you if you're going to be just a runner, and this is where I come back to even Fitz, you know what I'm saying? Even, I talk about Fitz, I talk about Jay Bird, people that just run, right? For them... For them to make the next step to get to the point where they're like Joke or they're like uh, Mo, it's the defensive side of the ball. You know, that's what separates those guys from other people. You know, that's what makes it so easy for them to have to be able to run because they're playing elite level defense, you know. Thanks, Taylor. I appreciate it, man. You know. Now, okay, now just Mike brings up, now let's talk about that, the competitive side, the simulation side. One, let's let's come here, let, let, let's go into the mind of all you little Timmies, because there's 300 people in here. 20, 200 of you guys are little Timmies. Let's just be honest, man. Self-scouting is the most important scouting. It's 300 people in here. There's not 300 surgeons in here. There's 200 little Timmies. There's 50 nurses. There might be 50 decent players in here. That's how it is. You know what I'm saying? But anyway, this is my point. When you get on Madden, when you get on 
anything that you do. This goes back to the room of EA, right? Okay? So let's go back to the room of EA. Now we're going to put competitive mode in it. Who do you think is going to play the competitive mode? That's my question. I think any human being that picks up a stick is going to say, I'm, I'm going to play competitive. I don't want to play on the other shit. You're telling me, I, and we talk about this in 2K. Simulation, simulation to me, that's the G League. That's the, I don't want to play, I'm, I'm shitty. That's the first thing it tells me. Oh, there's a mode that's competitive. Oh, I want to play the other one. What type of nuts does that person have? Now, I'll tell you, not a lot of people have big nuts. They don't. But they act like they have big nuts. And the first step of acting like you have big nuts is saying, I'm playing on competitive. That's the first step. So and, and so for me, the, the whole mode shit, you can throw that out the window. Because nobody's going to go in there and say, you know what, I don't want to play on competitive. Seriously, nobody's going to go in there and say, I want to play. I, I, I don't want to play on competitive. I want to play on something else that's easier for me. Unless you're literally a six-year-old playing on arcade. There's no, I, I, I would, listen, you guys find me, and once again, it's 300 people in here. Has anybody said to me, I want to play on simulation? Eskimo's right. Eskimo's to the point where it's like, maybe the game, you know, we get to the leaderboards. You know, I feel like the I feel like the mode on Mutt is cool. It's fun. It's enough for little Timmy. He can have fun. He can do his thing. Right? Mutt is cool. It's cool. You're right. But when you put big boy pants on, you know what I'm saying? When you take them big nuts and you strap them up, baby. You know what I'm saying? When you want to just drop your nuts. When you want to go to the competitive mode. Okay. You, I'm not dropping a pick. I don't care if I got pick specialists, uh, pick artists, zoned out, a superstar, anything. Like, I'm not dropping a pick. If you throw some shit at me, it's a pick. And I'll tell you this right now, chat. I will, every single person that has qualified for it will sign up for that right now. Every single human being. If you throw in the traffic, it's a pick. Signed up. If you throw to somebody, that's a pick. Signed up. There is nobody that's arguing that they want drop picks. Not a single soul in the world that wants drop picks. Now, I'll get it wrong. I'll throw some picks, and I'll be happy as shit when they drop them. And I'm going to score a touchdown that play. You know what I'm saying? But at the same time, if there was a petition for me to sign, and for you guys to sign, all 300 of you guys, if there was a position, petition for you guys to sign, we want no more drop picks. All 300 of you guys would sign the petition. 100%. Now, I'm, I'll go back to it. When it happens for my opponent, ha-ha, <laughs> dickhead. But I would still sign up. I would still sign up to make sure that there's no drop picks. You know? Uh, and for me... I don't know if we would all agree on getting rid of the run. Not getting rid of the run, but toning the run down. I don't think we would agree to that. I think there's some people that would still want to run. Uh, and that's fine. You know, I'm not going to be there. I And I feel like to me, uh, I feel like that you can't really patch the run too much. And then, uh, and my man, Solitari, Tells me this. Says like this. One fumbles, one thousand percent need to happen. I, I I want it back to where I was in the beginning of the year when people actually fumbled. But as much as we hate random shit, football is random as fuck. It is. Football is probably the most random sport in the world. You know, I one thousand percent feel that. And at some point, you you gotta try to brace the football simulation and the competitive shit. There has to be, I, I, I want it 90%. You need some part of football in it. Football is the fluke. I, I think fo the way the ball bounces. I took, take a look at the Eagles. The Eagles lost because they fucking dropped passes. Not because they got boxed. Not because they, they couldn't block. Not They just literally just dropped passes. This motherfucker Aguilar just, just dropped the ball on the ground. If the shit that happened to the Eagles, to one of y'all in Madden, and this shit would, uh, y'all would, uh, somebody would just jump out of a window. Seriously. You know what I mean? They, and, and, and stuff like that happens to every team, man. Every single team. 
you know, and then even even when we look at the Bears and the Redskins last night, the first pick six was just a overthrow in traffic or pressure on them overthrow pick six. A kick return, two fumbles, seven drop passes. That was Madden. Yeah, like that ass. The Lions got a kick return, two fumbles, seven drop passes. You know, and it's and for me, that's some fluky shit. Now, at what point do we get to Madden and be like, we don't want any fluke? You know, and and, and for me, I, I don't want fluke. At the same time, man. And for me, all right. All right, let's everybody relax in the chat right now. I had to ban a lot of people in the chat. They were saying they were being really, really disrespectful. So to me, I had to had to get them out of here. But that's what I'm saying. There is a lot of fluke in, the, in, in football, and, and at some point that has to come into Madden. You know, competitors should be different. Yeah, I, I I guess so. But then this is this is what happens, man. Okay, so we're going to make competitive different. All right, so if they, if they tweak competitive to where there's no drop picks, there, there's no fluky shit, right? I would tell you this right now. Everybody would still try to play this shit. It goes back to the big nut syndrome. Like, these guys pretend they have big nuts, and they're going to go try to play the competitive mode. So I just think, personally, to me, it would all transfer back to that mode. Like, everybody would be on that mode. You know, that's just how I feel. Unless it was just salary cap. And I still feel like people would complain. Because, and also on top of that, most of the people complaining and bitching are people that are good man players. Maybe I just don't follow the shitters. Maybe I don't, but they tag me in a lot of stuff. And I appreciate you guys tagging me and shit. And I will tell you right now, I restrain a lot from telling you guys you just fucking suck. Because I want to tell 90% of people that tag me in videos about man, I want just want to tell them they suck. Stop, it's your fault. I want to tell them that, honestly. But I refrain and I say, damn, that's crazy. Damn, they cheated you, right? So what I'm saying, so most of the people that complain are the people that would be playing that, that this competitive mode anyway, you know? But we'll see. I don't think it will ever be there. We'll go like, like, like I said, I really think the game is just based around what they think will keep people playing. I'm really starting to feel like that. The more I get involved and see the big picture, because I started out like you. I started out playing Madden on my 60-inch plasma over here, fucking trying to win a belt. I didn't know shit. I didn't know anything. I didn't know a goddamn thing. The deeper I get, the more I see the big picture, the more I start thinking what it could be and what it really is. You know, and and, and it gets to the point where we always almost step back and see, they and it's obvious, they remove shit from the game, so we have to pay to do it. And that, to me alone, is crazy. Like, to me, that alone is me. You know what I'm saying? That, or that alone is, is wild. Oh, we're dropping picks. Let me buy some pick specials. My linebacker can't jump. Let me buy a lurker. My D lineman won't shed. Let me buy a power specialist. My zones won't play. Let me buy a zoned out. My bow won't truck. Let me buy a vape. Like, you need to buy and equip this shit for your players to do basic shit. That's nuts. Like, that's nuts. What is Master Gamer's leader? I'll tell you something, chat. I don't like... There's people like, for me, Master Gamer is not the person I'm running to, to go check out. But let me check, take a look. Master Gamer is 51. Oh, shit. Hold on. No. No. Alright, that's the end of the podcast, man. This ain't no hope no more, man. Oh, 
Like what? Two and zero is fifty one. So if you play two like top fifty people, Jack, I got you. That's pretty wild. Two and zero is fifty. This is the year for Simu to make 10 accounts. Just takes one. <laughs> Just takes one, baby. Two and oh should never be. That's fucking nuts. That's pretty nuts. That's pretty nuts to me. But like I said, man, I, I really think the game, the game is so much about how can we retain these players? How can we keep these players playing? And how can we get these people spending money on money? I think that, I think as much, it's completely, it's a business, man. If I was running mutt, my shit would be the same way. If I was playing FIFA, my shit would be the same way. And that's just how it goes uh, for me. Um, I, I don't know. All my stuff is speculation from what I've witnessed, from what I see in the game, from what I've been around for the last three or four years. Um, that's just how I feel. You know, and like I said, a lot of what I base my judgment on is talking to Rex about six months ago. You guys can listen to that podcast. SoundCloud is my most listened to track. YouTube, it's down there somewhere. I wish I could tell you where to search for it, but it's down there. Uh, and, and a lot of that, com combined with what I see, combined with what I heard from these competitive summit meetings and hear these guys directly talk to us, uh, it's, it's kind of how I feel. You know, and, and, and that's why I talk about the big meeting at EA. You know, and I think... The people that work in man, that's, that's not their decision. You know, I don't think it's Clint's decision. I think Clint is the head of Madden. He's the head of gameplay at Madden, right? Me, personally, I like Clint. I believe in Clint. But ultimately, I think he don't decide shit, really. Like, he might be the leader, but he's not the one saying, let's make it easier to run. Let's, he got bosses. Everybody has a boss. You know, even me, like, you guys are my boss, essentially, man. What you guys want to see, what you guys want to watch, what you guys want to do, that that. That controls me. You know, that it's not, I just can't wake up every day and not care about you guys. You know, and that's pretty much how Clinton is. I think the direction that he takes is 1,000% is influenced by people telling him what they want. You know. No, Wes, I think you got banned. But Wes, I got you. But honestly, I don't like when people ask for shit. Back of box features just so for now. Yep. I mean, uh, Kramer. I think one that we talk about. We, let's talk about Clint in the uh, comment. That pretty much the last comments he's made on Twitter. And I one thousand percent believe that Clint getting rid of Twitter was directly from the big meeting at EA. The big Clint, you gotta get off Twitter. It's bad. But I think. Um, you know, I experience a little bit of, of what people go through on Twitter, and, and, and I compare it to, like, kind of the chat, right? I compare it to the chat. You know, say I'm, say I'm playing a game, man, weekend, whatever the hell I'm playing, right? And I'm getting popped, right? And then here comes Bazooka fucking Jim in, in my chat saying, you need to run the ball more, right? Now me, I'm fucking W. I don't need to explain myself to every Bazooka Jim. Oh, I want to. I want to take Jim behind the woodshed and punch him in the mouth because Jim is fucking stupid, right? I think he's stupid and he's pissing me off because he don't know what the hell he's talking about, right? And me as a man, right, playing the game, reading the chat, I want to air Jim out. I see Jim in the chat. I say, Jim, shut the hell up. You don't know what the hell you're talking about. And sometimes I do. But a lot of times I let it go because I got to be the bigger person, right? So we get to the point where we're at a gym, right, Jack? So Jim is in the chat. Now, I compare what Clint, what Rex, all these guys do on Twitter to me being a streamer, okay? They know what the fuck's going on with their game. They know the problems where they know everything. But here comes fucking Jim on Twitter. Fix the fucking contains. Oh, my God, I can't stop Michael Vick. Blah, blah, blah. And he'll post a picture with no contains, no spy. Look, they'll post a picture with no spy, no contain, and Michael Vick scrambling for 50 yards. Oh, my God, your game sucks. Clint, fire Clint. Oh, my God. Now, Clint is probably like me, right? 
Clint is probably like me. He's playing. He looks over. Here's Bazooka Jim. Bazooka Jim don't know what the hell's going on. He's just getting dotted. He's just a dickhead. So now Clint gets to the point where, oh, I'm the head game gameplay guy for Madden. Do I respond to Bazooka Jim? Because I know he's a fucking idiot. Right? Do I respond to him? I want to respond to him. I want to tell Bazooka Jim, shut the hell up. You don't know what the hell is going on. I want to. But I can't. And sometimes for me, you know, if you're a professional, you never can respond to Bazooka Jim. And for me, that's how I feel about streaming. I never want to respond to Bazooka Jim in the chat. But sometimes I do. Like, shut the hell up. You don't know what you're talking about. And I feel like the urge that Clint probably had to do that to every single person it's probably unreal. And I think at some point, EA, at some point he probably got a little wild and said some wild shit to people. And EA was like, all right, this is no good. We got to get you off Twitter. You know what I'm saying? Now, I think that's what happened. Uh, as far as his comments about conservative tackling. One, I played 56 games a weekend league this, this weekend, right? This is my question to you. Has Clint played 56 games of Madden this year? My question to you. That's my only question I have. You know, for me, uh, I would probably, I don't know. You know, I, I don't really know what goes on. I really don't know if, maybe I sit there and play the shit all day. And, and it gets to me to the point where some of the shit happens, right? To the point where it's like they had to see this. You know, it wasn't like, it wasn't, um, it wasn't, some of the stuff is obvious. You know, it's, for me, there's no way you don't play with Ezekiel Elliott for two hours and realize, damn, this dude is pretty fucking tough. So it goes back to, this is kind of how they want the game. You know, the way the game is, that's kind of how they want it. You know, they want Zeke doing this shit. But it goes back to uh, Clint talking about conservative tackle. To me, I think it just, and, and you know how Twitter is, man. If you word some shit a little bit wrong, you make a statement that sounds too crazy, they're going to take it wrong with it. And I think that's kind of what happened. And also, this this comes down to text messaging, and this go, can kind of tie into Tinder the same way, too, if you guys want to. But it's hard to take a written sentence and, and, and really, sometimes the context of a written sentence can be uh, skewed one way or the other, depending on what you want to do. And they took that and just ran with him saying, conservative tackle works fine. You know, and and sometimes the context get lost. The emotion in a sentence, the, the passion, the way somebody says it is completely lost uh, in a in in the text, you know. King Bammy just said it works, and at the point, it really doesn't work. What's drama news? What is drama news on Twitter? Bazooka Jim? That's my guy. I don't know nothing about that. What is drama news? I don't. I don't know what the hell. Listen, man. I'm not a drama person. I really only talk about drama shit when it pertains to the competitive side of Madden. That's the only time I really talk about that stuff. You know. Just so I don't understand what you said. Yeah, a lot of people tag me on Twitter. But let me see. Yeah, I'm big time if y'all ain't know. You know, no big deal. Scomo did some Yo Mama stuff. Alright, yeah, I'm... Anything, anything to do with your mom, I'm all, don't ever tag me or talk about it. I'll tell y'all that right now. Bazooka Gym merch. Bazooka Gym, Bazooka Gym, what's the, I think Bazooka Larry is, is the number one Bazooka name though. I mean, Bazooka Joe, obviously, but you know what I'm saying? 
I'll tell you what, chat. Y'all got to remember who came up with the bazookas. That's all I want to say, man. When everybody's running with the bazookas, I just want you guys to know who came up with the bazookas. That's all I'm saying. Because everybody's running with the bazooka Freds, the bazooka Larrys. Just know. And, and I want you guys to realize this something too, man. A lot of the shit that happens in Madden, man, I set a lot of these trends. That's all. I want y'all to remember that. Because it, it gets to my point where it's starting to piss me off. It's, start, it's starting to feel like this, chat. It's starting to feel like, man, I, like people really think they can just take my ideas. They can take my, my shtick and they can run with it. I don't like that shit. Now, I let it slide. Because I know you guys know where the real is. But it's starting to piss me off. I'll tell you that right now, Chad. Gryffindor. Yeah, I mean, it's, it was a rough weekend. Chizzy, I do remember Devil's Flex. Yes. I remember Green Bay Playbook. See, I thought Bazooka was a C. See, shit like that. Because now people start thinking it's other people's shit. And I don't like that. Late to late, cause 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 C was a good guy. Your mama's just a. I don't even want to talk about. It. I I'm not even getting into it. C was C what? Cause I put it like this, chat. C was a funny guy. He's an entertaining guy without talking about other people. You know, I feel like that's the lowest form of life. When you can't get people to listen, when you have to just talk about other people constantly to get people to listen to you, when you have to degrade other people to get people to listen to you. That's the lowest form of fucking life. And Sibu don't have to do that. Sibu tell jokes. Sibu funny. Y'all watch Sibu play. That shit is cool. You know what I'm saying? Trugio. Trugio with the sub, man. Put some hennies in the chat. That's all. Just so. Yeah, I agree. Casual players are the majority of man players. Exactly. That's pretty much what I said about the whole day, you know? Thanks, Trugio. I appreciate it. No, I just don't like... I, I, I'll never like somebody that has to talk about other people. You know what I mean? I think that shit's super corny. Like, I joke about people all the time. But I feel like, uh, you know, I, I just feel like literally... And this is another thing about drama shit, right? What if nothing happens that week? What the hell can you talk about? What if there's no drama? Essentially, you have no material unless somebody is somebody else to talk about. To me, that's fucking wild. If I can't talk about Jimmy, Tom, and Larry, I have no material. I have no reason for you to watch. To me, that's nuts. That people don't see don't see that. You know. All right, LT, you LT, you getting crazy right now? Like I done banned you about ten times. You done got 10, 10 minute timeouts. What is Saturn Strike doing what? Like the lake? It just makes you look worse. That's my point. Like it's a slime ball, it's a slime ball pond. I'm cool. I don't want to go down. I'm I'm way bigger than that. You understand what I'm saying? Like, and that's why I don't even like talking about it and giving any attention to shit like that. Cause it's corny. You know? I just I, I to me it's like it's corny. Only man, if you if you gotta make your living talking about other people negatively it's not even like all right say we're talking about like like ellen like ellen degenerate talk shows obviously they talk, they talk about other people we have interviews all the time let me talk to this person blah 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 you know that's but that's most of that is 1000 percent positive you know so for me it's like okay if you're sitting here now all i do is talk negatively about people all day is, is wild Yes, Pyro, and the best way to get new people into the system is do what? Make it easier for them to play. Seriously. You know? Doritos and weed, man. I like, I'm like. i glad you like the playbook that I'm running right now, man. I'm glad. Take a look at it, manturf.com. Check that out. All right, if, listen, if y'all like people slandering other people, that's cool. I'll do it all day. Listen, I listen. this is my point. I feel like this is... This is where it gets to me. If you need to slander people for people to watch you, that's nuts. If you 
If your entire basis of anybody watching you is just because you're completely negative about the other person, about the next player, about the next person, then that really, what what is your what is your talent? Really? You know, because I'll come in here, I'll kill, I'll kill Risky Bum Ass, I'll kill Oreo, I'll kill Jay Bird, Fitz catch it the most, I'll kill Skimbo all the time. I'll kill Bugs. Bugs is it's six feet deep from me killing him, slandering the shit out of Bugs. But I feel like this for me, I don't need to do that. That's just on top. That's just a cherry on top. You know? Yeah, I don't know. I don't. It's really not my angle because I feel like me personally, for me, uh, if that was my angle, I would go to bed at night. Like, what the, is this really my talent? You know, Lake to Lake, I did, and that's the craziest shit to me. Lake to Lake, they said make a song. I said, all right, this is cool. He cool. We, we kick it. We can make songs and everything. But the minute the minute I'm not running and making a song, now I'm the one getting thrown on the bus. So I'm getting begged to do more songs, but then if I don't respond, if I'm doing some shit, now I'm getting thrown on the bus. Where the hell does that shit lay? Like, where does that, where, like, you know what I'm saying, chat? How does that make any sense? Just whatever is going to, just say the wildest shit to get anybody to fucking listen. And that's crazy. Like, that's wild. Yes, let me find let me find my way. But see, this is what I'm saying, lights out. And this is what I mean. I feel like that won't last. And I feel like to me, and I feel like to me, I want to build something that lasts. I want to build something that y'all watch no matter no matter what. Whether you killing somebody, whether you uplifting somebody, whether you just chilling, I want y'all to just I want to build something that lasts and isn't dependent on the next man fucking up. Or isn't dependent on me laughing at somebody else or throwing somebody else in the dirt for my benefit. That's what I want to build. You know what I'm saying? That's all. Like I said, I feel you. you know what I'm saying? And that's what's most important to me, man. I want to build something real and something that, that, that has more validity to it than just, you know, and, and, and strike. And, and listen, I just, and it, it, it pisses me off that one person would listen and believe that shit. It pisses me off that anybody would listen and believe shit like that. No, but anyway, like I said, I already gave this too much attention. I don't really like, you know what I'm saying? You know, that's too much attention for me. But like I said, man, I don't know if you guys are liking the gameplay update. Like I said, I feel like you still drop picks. Now they just took out the only good thing about defense to me. Yeah, exactly, Celtics. It's cool. It is what it is. You know. I ain't gonna talk about it no more. Hey, we can Will Glyphon Thor. I'm glad you liked it, man. Hopefully we do it again this week. I gotta talk to Problem. I mean Problem, I feel like Problem not he not feeling Madden right now. Honestly. He not like he having fun playing FIFA. <coughs> he was playing the two K. He been playing Fort. You know what I'm saying? I feel like he not feeling it the same way, you know. So we'll see. Well, here, man, I I, I like playing 2K more than I like playing Madden right now. I'm excited to go play 2K with uh, Wesley Skimbo and them and play 2K tonight. I wish we could get started right now so I don't got to play at 4 in the morning. You know. Yeah, I don't want Madden to be horrible, though, man. And I feel like... Yeah. And now for me, for me, I, and Mark, a, a lot of it for me is um. Y'all watch me play Madden, you know, and, and right now I feel like I'm getting half the viewers from 2K, you know, which is cool. But ultimately, I have to play Madden to make this that successful, you know. I don't think I've got one sub from playing. I actually subs subs are two dollars and fifty cents, you know, but they definitely fell off the last month or so for sure. Fancy, we on the threes, man. Ah, new player. But like I said, enough of that. I talked about the patch. I talked about why I think it does. I talked about SC. 
talked about enough little bazooka Tommies and everything. Jack, it's hard. It's hard to play 2K and look at the chat because uh, Sly Virus, my guy with this. Um, just so, yeah, for sure. I, I, I wish I get to that point too, man. And I'm trying, you know, really. Strong arm, what up? It's just baby steps. That's all. Every day is a better day. That's all. I'm sitting here drawing. Fancy, that's awful. I want the arena. But like I said, this was the Needed Podcast, episode 49. Next week is episode 50. I'm trying to think of something big I could do for episode 52. That would be a whole year of Needed Podcast. What can I do, man? I would stealth my guy with the sub two month streak. Thank you. I appreciate it. So for me, what can I do for the year long episode? Do I got to do like a live broadcast from somewhere? What should I do? You know? Black Alpaca. What the hell does that mean? Skimbo on the podcast? Yeah, let me get hammered in stream, Jay Bird. Yeah, that's amazing podcast quality. I agree. I have a podcast about competitive me and I agree. I'm trying to, I'm doing everything I can, man. Greedfall. What the hell? A hey, racing dude. Come on, bro. A perk cast? Perk cast might pop. Just pop a couple perks and then just see what I'm saying? Pop a couple perks and then get it going. Hey man, it might it might be the move, man. It might be the move. Need a podcast episode forty nine. Hit the like button. <laughs>